Really quickly, I gotta give a shout out to my sponsor, SeatGeek. If you guys are planning on going to any games or events this year, just use the app SeatGeek. I know I'm trying to go to a few NFL games this year, so I'm definitely using it. SeatGeek is an app that puts tickets from all over the web in a single place, making the whole buying experience simple. They rate these deals on a scale of one to 100, with the higher the number, the better the deal. And if you use my promo code KTO, you will get $20 off your first purchase. So I'm going to drop the link in the description. Honestly, you might as well just get the app just in case. You don't want to lose out on cheap tickets. Let's take a look at the history of Division I athletics. If we go back to when the first NCAA basketball tournament took place, keep in mind that this is before World War II. We had never seen a team win a national championship in both basketball and football in the same year. Which makes sense. It's extremely difficult to win a championship in one sport, let alone both of them in the same year. Well, this held true until 2006. The University of Florida achieved that truly spectacular feat. Yet, not even one season passed by, and the exact same thing had a chance of taking place. Kansas, known for basketball. In fact, one of the greatest schools in the history of college basketball. Just behind Kentucky, they have the second most wins of all time. But even a team of that magnitude, winning a national championship is rare. Since 1989, Kansas had only won the tournament once, the 2007-2008 season. Must make one here to extend the game. Collins driving, almost lost the handle. Chalmers for the tie. Got it! With two seconds. Unbelievable. Dozier at midcourt for the championship. No, we're going to overtime in San Antonio. Kansas would go on to win that game in overtime. This seemed to make up for all the years their football team was horrible. From that standpoint, it's it's embarrassing to me personally, and it's, I think it's embarrassing to, you know, KU, our university. They don't they deserve better than that. You could say that Mark Mangino had brought the program a little bit of respectability. When you're as bad as Kansas was, other than that one good season in the 90s, going 6-6 six and six is solid. But entering 2007, they were expected to finish around 5-7 and seven, and almost last in the division. So I'm sure fans weren't ready for what was about to take place. That's what's on the line Saturday against Nebraska. In a crazy season already, this was one of the major storylines. Mark Mangino was a hero, and he had a national championship contending roster, led by captains Aqib Talib, who you may recognize, and the undersized quarterback Todd Reese, who was the surprise of college football. After some magic against Oklahoma State, Kansas was featured on Sports Illustrated. And to help with the absurdity of this moment, that's their backup quarterback. Yeah, he had to move to receiver after losing a quarterback battle with Reesing before the season. But with all this hype, the Jayhawks still had one major regular season test. Missouri, who was the other oddball of the season. With one loss midway through the year, they had bounced back and they helped create one of the most unexpected division championships in the history of the Big 12. On this same day, just hours before the game, number one LSU lost in dramatic fashion to Arkansas in triple overtime. 
making whoever won this game the number one team in the nation. I can't even imagine how hyped the fans were. The referee denied is a good one. John Bible's Big 12 third. Most electrified freshman of the country. Stands back on the goal line. Game on. Seven, heading into the fourth quarter. And to now think that the fact that Kansas, I know it's a long shot, the fact that they've worked themselves, it's pretty amazing fourth quarter by the Jayhawks. In trouble. There's a safety. 36-28. Just like that, the chance to be number one was gone. Even with this disappointing ending, Kansas would still play in their best bowl game since 1968. And the matchup against VTech was one that some felt they didn't deserve. We begin with college football. The Kansas Jayhawks keep winning games and keep failing to impress most of the world's college football viewing audience. Some of their critics argue that they really didn't play anyone except for Missouri. And they hadn't proven they were good enough to play with the best of them. With his leverage and is able to wrap him up and take him down. Critical mistake by Tyrod Taylor to get... Another drops back into the shotgun on second and seven. Oh, oh he takes a hard hit after 48 yards. Reesing, fires. Touchdown, Jayhawks. And this time, Glennon is intercepted by Justin Thornton. And Thornton takes it inside the five. The Kansas Jayhawks defeat the Virginia Tech Hokies. And the FedEx orange ball by the score of 24-21. 2007 was just a crazy year because just two years after this, Mark Mangino would resign. There is a bit of controversy that has to do with this. Stories like Mangino asking one player if he, quote, wanted to end up being an alcoholic like his father, or telling another player that if he didn't get it together, he would send him back to St. Louis so he could, quote, get shot with his homies. They probably wanted to fire this guy even when he was winning, but they obviously couldn't. Following that, they have sunken deep into the abyss. Since 2009, their record in conference play is 5-65. and 65. That's one of the most shocking things I've ever seen. And that's not even counting their record so far this season. If you count that one win they have so far, they have won 12 games total since 2011. The same amount of wins they had all in 2007. And I think people were wondering, how's this guy gonna turn it around? This is the most random team ever, with one of the fastest rise and falls you'll ever see. But they will always be able to claim that season. Momentum can do crazy things. They actually did receive a number one vote at the end of 2007. Some teams will never you get have that. To watch out for it. You've got to have those crossover plays that they both run well. On second and nine, Taylor's pass. 